<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the classroom. A lecture series with you, me, and my trusty whiteboard here, where we break down and dissect matters of the body, mind, heart, and spirit in an easy to understand format and in the hopes of helping to be able to disseminate free knowledge that could help build our health overall. And one of the things I was talking to a patient about, and it sort of struck me as something that I take for granted, is a question. And the question is this. What is health? Because as physicians, we talk about health all the time. We talk about building your health. We talk about things that destroy your health. But what exactly is health? And so what I started to do was I did a little research. I did a little experiment. I asked everyone, hey, what do you do to keep yourself healthy? And here's the crazy part. More than 95% of patients who I asked, who I did this sort of informal study with, here was their response. What I do to keep myself healthy? Diet and exercise. That was, that was the majority of the people that, who, who said that they did stuff to keep themselves healthy. It was either one. Because a, a surprisingly large amount of people said, well, I don't really do anything to keep myself healthy. I just, it's just health. And to those people, I say health is something that we have to cultivate. It's like a bank account. We have to add savings and we have to keep putting money in. So that in times of stress and strain and disaster and craziness, and all, all, that, all that chaos that goes on with life, we have savings that which we can pull on. We have health that we can use to be able to fund whatever we have to do during these times of stress and strain. So, as you could probably guess, I, I wasn't too satisfied by that response, diet and exercise. And so what I did was I, I decided to do a little reflection and see if I can clarify in my... Because I, I guess being a doctor, I do have a concept of what a health is, but to be able to crystallize it and to be able to, to, to speak about it, exactly what is health actually was surprisingly difficult. And so I spent some time meditating on it. I spent some time sort of reflecting on it. And this is what I came up with. Health, to me, is a combination of four things. It's a combination of our body, our mind, our emotional heart and our spirit is a combination of all of these things being in sync, being healthy. I, I, I try to look at these as sort of the four pillars on our house on each corner. And a lot of people, so, so for instance, the 95% of these people here, this is what they focused on, the body. And I guess understandably so because we live in a physical world and we were told from very young we have, to, we have to eat well and we have to exercise. That is what health is. But you and I both know people who go to the gym and you and I both know people who are skinny and who could run marathons and, you know, unfortunately they end up passing. We both know people like, we all know people, or at least heard of people like that. So then there had to be more. And that is what brought me to the mind, heart and spirit as well. And so I do agree that diet and exercise is really important. But diet and exercise is like making sure that we only reinforce one pillar of the house and the other three pillars of the house are sort of largely not looked after, in a sense, largely ignored. And so it got me thinking, like, how is it that we can start to look after the mind, heart, and spirit to be able to build total health? So what came to mind was, what came to mind, it was essentially the mind is how we interact with the world. How we interact with the world. So, every day, from the minute our eyes open and we are awake to the time that we're, sometimes even while we're asleep, we're thinking, it's really important that we have control of our mind rather than our mind controlling us. Now, think about it. Think about when we, someone gives us a bad drive on the road, right? We suddenly fly into a fit of rage. At that point in time, our mind is in control of us. And 
what makes us a human, what's ma- what makes me Roshan, takes a back seat to whatever anger and, and negative words I have to use to the person that gave me that bad drive. And so for me, being mentally healthy is the ability to be in control, to be in control of our mind. That to me is, so I'll, and I'll put here, control. Because that's important. If we can be in control of our mind and our thoughts, then we become extremely, extremely powerful beings. But, and again, throughout this lecture, lecture series, throughout the classroom, I will give lectures on ways in which we can control the mind. Make no mistake, those things are coming. In terms of the heart, in terms of the emotions, how exactly can we be healthy? How exactly, what, what exactly can we do to promote a healthy emotional state? And for me, the biggest thing, the single biggest thing that clouds our emotions, the biggest thing that destroys our emotional well-being are negative emotions. Anger, bitterness, jealousy, greed, whatever, whatever negative emotion that pulls us away from the whole, that makes us feel isolated, that makes us feel like we're alone, that makes us feel hurt, that makes us feel used, that makes us feel resentful. Those are things that cloud our mental emotional state. And if I had to come up with a single virtue or a single emotion that we must strive for to be able to have a healthy emotional state, it's this one. And, and it's not love. It's not love. What I would say, forgiveness. The ability, the ability to drop whatever negative emotions that we feel and the ability to let go. How I do this personally, when someone has wronged me, even think of the person that gave me a bad drive. Let's go back to that example. I give that person the benefit of the doubt, because we're all human and we're all trying our best. So you give the person the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he had his pregnant wife in the car. Maybe he had a bit of a diarrhea. I don't know. So maybe that's why he did it. And then the other thing, and the other reason why I'm able to or the other virtue or the other quality that helps me to be able to forgive someone is the fact that I don't take this world personally. I don't take it personally. Don't, and this is super important, don't take it personally. I'll write it down because it's so important. You see, here's the thing, guys. When people say not nice things or when they do not nice things to us, if we stop and think about it for a moment, there's an extremely good chance that if it was someone vaguely resembling us or vaguely having our similar qualities in that position, that person would treat them the same way. Why? Because all of the negative things that, that other people say and do, it comes as a result of their own programming, their own negative thoughts, their own insecurities that they choose to inflict on, well, not so much choose, but they, make, they inflict on the world, essentially. Because when something bad happens to us, there are two things that, two ways in which we can go. One, we can say, hey, this bad thing happened to me, and I'm going to make sure that those around me never have to experience what I experienced because it wasn't a nice thing to go through. Or something bad happens to me, and they say, you know what? This thing happened to me, and I'm gonna, people are going to pay. People are going to feel my pain. People are going to go through what I went through. And so when people do not nice things to us, it's usually as a result of their own programming. And so by not taking it personally, we're able to drop it really quickly because well, that had nothing to do with me. So that, that, the ability to drop these negative emotions helps us to have a healthy emotional state. And then finally, how do we have a healthy spirit? By doing a spiritual practice. Now, this spiritual practice could be something as simple as seeing us and everybody else as one and holding that mindset throughout every minute of the day. It could literally be as simple as that. Or it could be something as simple as, you know, reading the holy books or or doing qigong or doing meditation or yoga, doing some practice that helps to put us back in tune with the whole. It helps us to feel a part of something bigger than just ourselves. And it's something that will give our life purpose. 
something that will help us to realize that there's more to life than just the eight to four and the traffic and the crime and the, those things. And so those spiritual practices elevate our consciousness. And so by practicing these things apart from just diet and exercise is what will, in my mind at least, help us to be able to achieve health. No. I, I try to give my lessons as practical as possible. And so the question now is, how do I know I'm healthy? And this to me, if we're able to satisfy all of these things to a large extent for a prolonged period of time, this is the symptoms of health, generally speaking. We would have increased vitality. The need for caffeine, the need for coffee will be no more because we have everything that we need to keep us going. Right? We would have increased We will have increased enthusiasm for life. When was the last time we met somebody who was enthusiastic for life? And I, 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 I reflect on that quite a lot. Because if we're not enthusiastic for life, then it's sort of a subconscious. We're like, you know what, this, this plays too hard. I, I, and that immediately begins the disease process. Being enthusiastic for life to me is one of the biggest markers of health and wellness. Because it says to me that your body, mind, and heart, and spirit are all in sync. They're all humming along. They're all well. And it brings great enthusiasm. And this to me, this finally, this to me is one of the biggest also markers of health. Now, when I, when I say health, it's not just physical. But the ability to share. The ability to share, guys, is what I look at as a marker of health. Why? Because if we could share, it means that we have enough. We are, we are overflowing with life force and we have enough to give to others. And imagine for a second, imagine just for one moment, if everyone started to practice these things and bring these things into balance. And imagine for a second, if everyone had so much life for us, they had life for us to share with each other. What a world that would be. And so, this is the symptoms of health, guys. This is my concept of what health is. And I hope that after today's lecture, you might have a better understanding of exactly what health looks like and what it takes to get there. I know I just sort of glossed over a couple concepts. And as I go through my lecture series in the classroom, we will actually break down each one. As, as the intro says, we talk about things that affect the body, mind, heart, and spirit. But as we go through, I'll give lectures on how to do these things. And uh, as we go along, we will achieve more and more and more health. So I hope that makes sense, guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next classroom. Take care.